It's Thursday, the 14th of March, 2019, and it's time for a long-awaited Oroville update in the mighty Luscombe. The rains have finally subsided, and the winds have finally settled down to make it safe enough for a great flight over the newly constructed $1.1 billion Oroville Spillway. For some of our new subscribers to the channel, this has been a long going, ongoing story. The, the destruction and rebuilding of the spillway, the main spillway and the emergency spillway at Oroville Reservoir. potentially just days away from the grand reopening of this new spillway, the opening of the spillway gates for the first time on the new spillway, as we've had a wonderful, almost normal, a little above normal rain and snow pack for this year. The snow in the High Sierra is over 150% of average. They've received over 50 feet of snowfall in the High Sierra, and rainfall has been average to above average everywhere else. All of the reservoirs throughout the state of California are either full or at their proper flood control level. Remember, uh, reservoirs need to maintain a certain level of flood control space and spill that extra water overboard during the springtime as the snows melt to make room for that additional runoff. I'll have the real-time numbers at Oroville once we get uh, airborne, but you may have uh, seen in the news that uh, FEMA has recently turned down the latest request for funding for the repayment of the rebuilding of the spillway at Oroville. With a total price tag of $1.1 billion, FEMA in the state of a natural disaster will typically recover or repay up to 75% for that disaster if it's a truly a natural disaster. And if you've read the forensic report, the extensive forensic report for what happened at Oroville, you can find out that there's plenty of blame to go around and plenty of human error as well. So is it fair for FEMA to pay the full 75% of the 1.1 billion at Oroville? No, there's plenty of other human blame, institutional blame. It's a spillway that needed to be rebuilt anyways. It was a spillway that needed to be rebuilt years ago. And it's simply not fair for the rest of the country to have to pay for something that California should have taken care of in the first place, at least not in its entirety. Now these FEMA payments will come and go in a series of tranches. Uh, you, you take uh, uh, about 200 billion, you put in a request for 200 billion, FEMA reviews it and they either re reimburse you or in this latest case, they denied it. And there, this is gonna go back and forth as we approach a series of payments until we get up to the 75% of the $1.1 billion total tab, or whatever FEMA agrees to. For some of our new subscribers that are here because of our recent aviation content dealing with the uh, recent airline disasters, the mighty Luscombe might be new to you. This is a 1947 Luscombe 8A with a 0200 engine and is what I call the original fly-by-wire aircraft. It's a wire cable going from the pilot's controls to the flight controls and all the aerodynamic safety features are built into this airplane, hardwired in. Let me show you around. Hello, testing, one, two, three. Do not uh, adjust the volume on your computer. Using this camera here, you're only gonna hear audio on your left speaker on your computer due to the intercom system in this airplane. All right, mixture rich. Give her a little prime. Mags on both. Clear! Hit the starter. And the brakes. And check for oil pressure. She can ride up. Now we're going to let her warm up the oil temperature. Set the altimeter at 3150, 3025 inches. And here on the ground, I like to lean the mixture out quite a bit at these low idle RPMs. The fuel is on the left tank. Trim tab is set for takeoff. Okay, we've cleared the pattern. We've done our engine run-ups. We've got the oil warmed up. Mags are on both. 
Masters on, mixture is rich. Lights are on, fuel is in the left tank. The left tank is full, thanks to your kind and generous support. Final is clear. Trim is set. Let's go to Orville. Lost from 71608, depart 25, Nevada County to the northwest. Winds are right down the runway. RPM checks, oil pressure checks. We're out of here. Uh, a little south wind today. Then you get up over these trees, it turns right away to a north wind. See that? Descending out of 3,500 feet, I usually cruise over to Oroville at 4,500 feet and then descend down to 2,500 feet to put me 1,500 feet above the dam. Looking at the lake level here on 14 March, we're looking at a lake elevation of 837 feet, well above the bottom of the main spillway gates of 813 feet. Outflows are 8,000 CFS out of the Hyatt power plant. Inflows are averaging around 11,000 CFS. Five days later, today, the 19th of March, the lake level is presently at 840 feet, a rise of just three feet in five days. Inflows and outflows are about the same, 8,000 CFS out and 11,000 CFS in. Remember the flood control plan for this year is to keep the reservoir at 848 feet for the month of March and then let it slowly rise after the end of March. The total reservoir capacity is an elevation of 900 feet, some 60 feet above the present level. With light rain in the forecast later this week and light snow in the Sierra, we should continue to expect a gentle melt off runoff from all the snow packed in the Sierra. Some work continues on the emergency spillway, the large stair step feature here to the right of the main spillway, including work on the buttress wall shown in yellow here, improving the structural integrity and the water flow between the original ogival shaped weir and the new roller compacted stair stepped emergency spillway. Here's some pictures from DWR showing the structural concrete work that's going in on the buttress wall. The emergency spillway is just that, only to be used in the event of an emergency if the water level should ever ri rise above 901 feet. The water will simply pour over the top of the OG weir, down over the buttress wall, and onto the roller compacted concrete emergency spillway stair-step pattern where the water will be directed to two low spots and into the natural drainage below. From there, the water returns to the Feather River via the Thermalito diversion pool below the base of the spillway. This new emergency spillway is further protected by a secant cutoff wall extending nearly 60 feet underground to competent bedrock below the edge of the apron of the roller compacted concrete emergency spillway. This should protect the emergency spillway from head cutting erosion as the water pours onto the bare dirt below the emergency spillway. Here's a closer look at that secant cutoff wall before it was backfilled. The whole idea of an emergency spillway is to act like a slow blow fuse and allow for the orderly evacuation of people in the event of an emergency where the water level of the lake should exceed 901 feet and pour over in an uncontrolled fashion the emergency spillway OG weir. Because the Oroville Dam is an earth-filled dam, and unlike a concrete dam, an earth-filled dam cannot be overtopped under any circumstances. Work continues on rerouting the access road to the boat ramp around the emergency spillway. As we bend around to look at the main spillway, we can see a little bit of water leaking through the gates, which is a normal condition once the water level is above the level of the main spillway gates. The main spillway gates have been inspected and repaired as necessary, 
and the seals to these gates have never been designed to be completely waterproof. The crews now have the water being shunted off to the left side of the spillway. But just the sight of this water has the wackadoodles all stirred up and spreading fear, hate, and discontent all around the internet. Backfilling operations continue here on the main spillway, and with the current weather forecast, inflows and outflows, we may see a grand reopening of the new main spillway here at Oroville as early as the beginning of April. The first sure sign will be when they remove the access road at the base of the spillway. It'll take them about two or three days to do that before they open the main spillway gates. Crews continue to do landscaping, terracing, and hydro seeding for erosion control throughout the entire site. With our above average precipitation year, California is looking to be in great shape for water storage for this year. And it'll be a perfect ending to this story to open the main spillway gates on the new spillway and then top off the reservoir this year. You can count on a full report here when it happens. Now let's head back to the barn. And the mighty Luscom. Two, one, zero, zero, Zulu weather. Wind two, four, zero at seven knots. Two Visibility more than one. That's all you need to know. The winds are down the runway. About seven to ten knots. Pretty good headwind. So we're going to want to modify our pattern a little bit. We're going to have to... Just take the winds into account. Don't make a long downwind and get blown way downwind. That's about a county blank 876, minor miles south and down on the 45 for 25, and I don't think it'll be an issue for the Luscom. Nevada County. The Luscom 608 on the downwind for 25, Nevada County now. Blanket coming in from the other direction. Don't get blown downwind, so you got to paddle so far back to the uh, runway. So we'll be cutting it short today. Carby. Power coming off. Trim, 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 trim. All the way full nose up. Now today, just about, just past being the numbers. I'm going to start my turn. Six or eight, left base two five, Nevada County. Full stop. Keep it coordinated, finals clear. See, I'm already blown a little further than I would like. Savannah County, blank up five miles, left 45, two five, 4,300, Savannah County. Feel that wind. Little side slip, just a little. Take it out. Duh. And the balloon. And we're down. Keep it straight, right there. Right there is the squirrely regime. And why is it squirrely right there in a tail dragger? Because you don't have enough wind over the rudder to give you much directional control. You're just relying on the tail wheel and the tail wheel steering. which is not the most positive steering on a conventional aircraft. As soon as you get some RPM up, like that, you instantly can feel the additional control authority you have over the rudder for directional control. Let's get some gas. Well, today's flying lesson, only $2.95. <laughs> Leave a dollar in the tip jar of the PayPal. <laughs> Just kidding. Oh, good point.
point. Why do we always get gas after each flight so that the tanks are full when we park it and that prevents any moisture, water specifically, from getting into the fuel tanks. It helps prevent any condensation, water, rust, or anything like that forming inside the tanks. Orville traffic, Oscar 71608, depart in 31 Orville, be left down when departure. We're getting the line, and with this uh, wind here, we'll see how short we can blast off. Get up to the line, stole drag style. Mags are both, mixture rich, trim is set, fuel is on the right tank, the right tank is full. Left off when when we threw one or close the window for minimum drag. RPM oil check good brakes. We're off. And we're out of here. <laughs>